Good afternoon, Faith family. Happy Friday to everyone. Um, here we go again, and welcome to day four of our devotional and prayer time as a faith family. I, I do pray that this time has been um, an encouraging time for you, and as we have opened God's Word together, as we have prayed together, and we will continue to do that um, next week as well, every weekday, um, for as long as we're not able to uh, be together. And as I said on Wednesday, and as Pastor Jordan um, said yesterday, my plan is kind of from here on out just to kind of read through and pray through um, the Psalms together. And today we're going to do so through Psalm 130. And let me just kind of begin by sharing a story that kind of shows you how my week has gone. So um, I think in January, our discipleship group started reading a book called Praying the Bible by Donald Whitney. Um, it was so transformative. We even shared it um, with uh, Wednesday night group as well, and many of our church members started praying and reading this book and praying the Psalms together. And basically, it, it goes something like this: Every day, um, you have five Psalms to choose from. So I have my little list right here. Um, I could have used it uh, yesterday, and you'll see in just a second why. But uh, if the day is the first of the month, you basically can choose from either Psalm one. Um, or you can count by 30, since there are typically 30 days in a month. So Psalm 1, Psalm 31, Psalm 61, Psalm 91, Psalm um, 121. And what you do is you just kind of flip through um, all five of those psalms and just pick one. So just pick one as you flip through and then read verse by verse and um, line by line and whatever the Lord lays upon your heart, just pray. And it is transformative. So yesterday I was planning for today and I realized that, of course, today is the 20th. So I began with um, the 20th Psalm and um, nothing spoke to me. So I went to uh, the, from, from 20, of course, I went to 50. And then from 50, I went to 80. And from 80, I went to 110. And then for some reason or another, I went from 110 to 130. And uh, I fell in love with Psalm 130, and I planned, and I prayed, and I studied, and um, then last night it dawned on me that if I could do math, um, which I can't, then I would have been at Psalm 140 instead of Psalm 130. So your pastor cannot math at all. It is not what I do, which leads us into um, the second part of my week, um, on Wednesday, we broke the news to Malachi, our seven-year-old, that he would now be homeschooled and we would be his teachers, to which he told us that we are not qualified to teach him. Um, and of course, I think this helps prove the point, but he said he gives the idea of us teaching him 100% uh, two thumbs down. So there is my week. Now, he did say that um, he thought Miss Natalie was qualified to teach him. So Natalie Ely, we will have him at your house every morning at 8.30, and uh, good luck with that. But so, so with that all said, um, because I studied Psalm 130, that's where we're going to be. So God is sovereign over this. Uh, my terrible math is responsible, but um, let's see where the Lord takes us today. But uh, one scholar describes Psalm 130 as the prayer that you pray when you come to the end of yourself. The prayer that you pray when you come to the end of yourself, and maybe that's where some of us are today. So we're going to quickly just walk through Psalm 130 verse by verse, and then we're going to end by praying through it. So verse 1 says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. How many of us have found ourselves in the depths this week, or maybe this month, or, or this year? Um, have you and are you crying out to the Lord? Sometimes in the midst of the depth we feel the depth so strong that we don't have the sense enough or we don't feel the urge to pray because of the darkness or the depth that we feel like we're in. But cry out to the Lord in the midst of the, the depth. And then verse 2, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. And here's the beauty of those words. The Lord does hear us and he does answer our prayers. In fact, yesterday, just yesterday, the Lord audibly answered a prayer that I had been praying. Now, it wasn't his voice. It was a prayer of someone else's voice who had no idea they were answering um, the prayer that I had been praying. But it was very clear that the Lord was speaking. And I'm not going to share that story today because it, it goes along with Sunday's message. So I'll be sharing that on Sunday, just how the Lord just answered and made very clear um, where we're going to be on Sunday morning. But um, the Lord answers. And, and what is the psalmist asking for here? He says, for mercy. Please, for mercy. 
think about this. Uh, there was a story told of a mother who approached Napoleon seeking pardon for her son. The emperor responded that the young man had repeated the same um, or committed the same crime twice and was deserving of, of death. And the mother said, I don't, you know, justice demanded death. And the mother said, I, I don't ask for justice. I ask for mercy. To which Napoleon said, your son does not deserve mercy. And the woman says, sir, if, it, if, if he deserved mercy or it would not be mercy if, if he could deserve it. And that's the point of our lives is if, if we could deserve it, it would no longer be mercy. So therefore the emperor said, well, then I will grant mercy. In all of our lives, we are undeserving. Mercy is when that which is deserved by us is withheld from us. And God is merciful. He is abundantly merciful. Yet we can't speak about God's mercy without, without also speaking about God's grace. And grace is anything and grace is everything that we receive beyond mercy. So not only is God infinitely merciful, God is also infinitely gracious. So God is gracious to us, under kindness or favor. And think of it in this way. In His mercy, God withholds from us or takes from us what we deserve. Yet in His grace, God gives to us what we could never deserve. So mercy is God withholding, grace is God giving, um, withholding what we deserve, giving what we could never deserve. And let me just summarize it um, real quick with differences as opposed to Scripture. So mercy is God withholding the punishment um, we rightfully deserve, and grace is God offering um, His precious gift of salvation instead. Mercy withholds the knife from the heart of Isaac in Genesis 22, whereas grace provides a ram in the thicket. Mercy runs to, forget, to forgive the prodigal son in that story, whereas grace throws a party with every extravagance. Mercy bandages the wounds of the man beaten by the robbers in the story of the Good Samaritan, but grace covers the cost of his full recovery. Mercy hears the, the words of the thief on the cross. Grace promises paradise that very day. Mercy converts uh, Paul or, or Saul on the road to Damascus, grace calls him to be an apostle. And my favorite, mercy closes the door of hell for us, whereas grace opens the door of heaven to us. Yes, the Lord ha is merciful and gracious, and yes, Lord, have mercy on us. Yes, Lord, give grace upon grace to us. And then verse 3, if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? We don't have time to dive into that, but if the Lord wasn't merciful, we couldn't stand. We couldn't do it. It's, it would be impossible for us. And then verse 4, but with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. That is why we can stand, because God is a forgiving God. 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God is faithful to forgive. Verse 5, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in His word I hope. And then verse 6, because it kind of goes together, My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. And here is the heart of what I wanted to get to um, today. I kind of entitled this little devotional, Mercy in Waiting. So mercy um, from God as we wait for God. But this is most definitely a time and a period of waiting for all of us. We're waiting for quarantines to be lifted. We're waiting on things to open, whether it be restaurants or schools or churches um, to be open. And we can't wait to do that again. We're, we're waiting on other specific things in our lives. And waiting can be discouraging. Waiting can be hard because waiting is an unwanted part of our Christian life faith in our Christian walk. Think of it this way. Get around a group of Christians, so a group of Christians, and tell them that you're praying for patience. And just about every single one of them is going to scream at you and say, no, don't do that. Don't pray for patience. Yet, is that a biblical um, response or is that biblical advice? And of course not. That's terrible advice. Galatians 5.22 tells us the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So patience is a fruit of the Spirit. So if it's a fruit of the Spirit that God wants to cultivate in us, then why is every Christian running away from it? And why are we afraid of it? Yeah, waiting is hard. I, I, I get it. I don't like it in my flesh, but we're never waiting alone. The entire Bible. So this book is a story of waiting. It's the major, it's a major theme, not the major theme, but a major theme that runs from beginning to end. Think about all the waiting that was done in Scripture. Abraham and Sarah waited 25 years um, for the birth of Isaac. Um, the people of Israel, now because of their sin, of course, and rebellion, they waited 40 years to get to the promised land. David waited 15 years between being anointed king and actually becoming the king of Israel. Um, the people of, of Israel, um, after they were taken off by the, the Babylonians and Assyrians, um, especially the Judah, waited 70 years um, for God to keep his promise and bring them back. The Old Testament prophets waited for the Messiah. And then we are awaiting people. We are awaiting for the return of Jesus Christ for us, by which we say, come Lord Jesus. You see, everything in the Bible, um, or everywhere in the Bible, God's children are waiting. You can't read Scripture and conclude that waiting is a mistake. For some reason, God has ordained waiting as part of the plan, and ultimately part of his plan. So we're waiting, but waiting on what? Verse 7, O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there's steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. So here's the point. We can't wait without hope. We have to have hope, and hope isn't just wishful thinking of, I hope this is going to end, and I hope we're all going to be okay, and I hope everything works out. No, this is confident expectation that because God is 100% thumbs up in control, we can trust Him and we hope in Him, knowing that His plans and His purposes will be fulfilled. Which leads us to verse 8, and He will redeem Israel from all iniquities. Our God is a redeeming God. He has redeemed us. He is redemptive in His purposes. So, um, if you can join me, we're going to finish by just praying through this psalm together. And um, like I said, the method is just clear. Is just this: you pray um, verse by verse, line by line, and whatever God lays in your heart, pray for it. We're going to be um, quick in doing that today, not to keep us too long. But um, let's just read and pray. So, out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. So, Father, we we do know that there are times, and maybe this is one of them, that we find ourselves in the depths in the depths of, of waiting, in the depths of despair, in the depths of, of Lord, maybe being um, indoors, God, is, is leading to depression for some. And um, God, we just pray that we would cry out to you. Lord, you are the Lord. You are our God. You are the covenant-making, covenant-keeping one. We can trust you in all things. And then verse 2 says, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. So God, hear us. And we thank you that you will hear us, God. You will answer us according to your will, according to your word. God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Don't treat us as we deserve, God, and give us grace, Lord. We are just dependent upon you, knowing that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Verse 3, if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand, but with you there is forgiveness. Father, we thank you that you are a forgiving God. We thank you that, Lord, you, you take us, and Lord, you renew us, you revive us, you restore us. In the midst of our sinfulness, God, you are forgiving Lord, help us, God, never to cheapen your forgiveness, but understand, Lord, that your forgiveness, God, our ability to be forgiven by you cost Jesus Christ his life. So, Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Forgive us and cleanse us, God. And then it says in verse 5, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, verse 6. So, Father, we wait upon you. Lord, we're waiting. And uh, Lord, we thank you that, God, you have given us patience. 
Even though many run from that, God, it is a gift, a fruit of your spirit in us. So God, just magnify that fruit in our lives as we wait upon you. Lord, your word says, I believe in Psalm 25, Lord, those who wait upon you will not be put to shame. Your word says in Isaiah 40 that as we wait upon you, Lord, you'll renew our strength. We'll mount up as wings like eagles. We'll run and not grow weary. We'll walk and not faint as we wait on you. God, we're waiting on you. We're trusting you. We're hoping in you, Lord. And that hope in you, Father, will not disappoint. And then it says in verse 7, O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there's steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. Verse 8, and he will redeem Israel from all iniquities. Father, we, Lord, we're hoping in you. And Lord, we thank you so much in this time that, Lord, you have given um, scientists and, and, and doctors, God, just um, knowledge and understanding and, and wisdom. And um, we just pray, Father, for continued success, God, in, in, in treating the coronavirus, and Lord, just continued, um, Lord, success in us, God, doing the things that are that we're being asked to do for the sake of, Lord, um, God, first of all, being good citizens, and second of all, Lord, loving our neighbor. But Lord, ultimately, our hope is in you. You are the great physician. You are the healer. Lord, you are the one that protects. You are the one that heals, and you are the one whose will will be done. God, we thank you that you are a redeeming God, that you are able to redeem. You are able to, again, Lord, restore and revive, God, what the enemy means for evil, Lord, you work it for good. So God, give us faith in that promise today, Lord. You are working all things together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purposes. God, just thank you for what we have in you. You are our hope. Lord, we are waiting, and Lord, we are are waiting in a way, Lord, um, in your mercy. So have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I thank you so much for joining us. We'll do this again on Monday at noon. We want to encourage you to join us uh, Sunday at 11 a.m., and it's going to be a a great day, um, again, in the Lord over the Word. So I pray that you would join us, and again, I pray that this has been an encouraging encouraging time and that those who are listening can say this has been a, a thumbs up uh, good good thing for us as a faith family. With that said, have a great weekend. Um, love you and I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Bye.